Hi everyone, Tash Rebais here and today I'll be going through um, chapter 2.2.1 of the Topological Insulators book by the author Shen Shan Qing and it is this chapter so we're going to go through the solutions of bound states and the Jackie, Jackie Rebai solution in one dimension so I'll be going through the steps, the mathematical steps and yeah, so the focus of this uh, video is on this one equation which is the Dirac equation in uh, one dimension and, use, and using with a variable mass distribution so of course this doesn't really make a lot of physical sense but it is a model that will be able to observe one dimensional bound states in so what is a bound state um, basically uh, if we have if we let in this video we will first consider a mass distribution of a minus m1 if x is less than 0 and m2 if x is more than 0 and this mass distribution looks something like if you just graph it, it looks something like that so this is m2 and this is minus m1 where m1 and m2 are greater than 0 so if we have this mass distribution we'll show later that the the um, the wave function looks something like like that and then it will be exponentially localized near the origin near the switching point and this is called what we call a bound state because when it's exponentially localized near the bound state then the highest the probability of finding the the particle at the origin at the switching point is high is very high so we sort of say that the particle is bound to the domain wall so um, yes, so that's what basically a bound state is and we'll be going through the mathematical steps to go from this equation to a solution of a bound bound state. So yes, so the first step is to recognize that inside here there are the Pauli matrices. So what are they? The Pauli X matrix is simply this and the Pauli Z matrix is 1 minus 1 like this. So we write this. In uh, um, so we want to find this is the Dirac equation. We want to find as with all quantum mechanics, we want to find the eigenstates. So we write it in down on matrix form. We get minus I V. We um sorry. We get Um, this is then the matrix form of H. We apply. We want to find eigenstates. So uh, this is a two, two by two matrix. So the eigenstates will be two by, uh, will be vectors of two components. So I denote the components psi one and psi two, and this equals to the energy. So currently we let E be any general thing, but later we will show that. Uh, that exists that always exists energy solution e equals to zero and those uh, those zero energy solutions have interesting properties so the first thing to do is to break it up into two cases because the uh, mass distribution is different for x less than zero and x greater than zero we consider the case where x is greater than equals to zero so then the mx is simply m2 is a constant So we will be considering this equation. And um and okay, so we see a derivative over here. So okay we will I'll, I'll write this like this first and later I'll make a small change. Okay, so we see a derivative over here. So, uh, clearly, it's a bit hard to work with. So, what one thing you can do is we can come up with an ansatz. So we let psi one equals to um, psi one a constant times e to the power of minus lambda x lambda positive the subscript plus x. And similarly, we come up with an ansatz.
and we make sure that lambda is positive because we want it to decay as x goes to infinity so that is so that it's physical so what this allows us to do is it allows us so then this we can replace this thing and, and this thing as well right yes so then from here um, this derivative simply pulls out the minus lambda plus so it'll be minus lambda plus minus lambda plus and the, the positive signs can the negative signs cancel so this yes so that is what the equation we have now um, so uh, we can cancel this on both sides and now we have expressions of uh, psi 1 plus and psi 2 plus remember these are constants we have expressions for them in terms of each other okay so wh what does this look like it looks like a mat standard matrix equation so if we want to find what the value of lambda plus is um, we we'll then need to take the determinant of both sides uh, yeah so so we we bring the e over and we have that determinant so we want to find the eigenvectors so we take the determinant of minus e minus m2 sorry that I have a bit of a runny nose okay so here we have a determinant equation so this allows us to express to, to find an expression of uh, lambda plus in terms of everything else so we do the this the this guy times this guy minus this guy times this guy so it'll be Okay, so what does that give us? That gives us lambda equals to mm, this guy is goes on minus one, so oh sorry, over here it should be e squared minus e squared b squared. So that gives us I invite you to fill in the steps yourself and then there'll be a plus minus here but since um, since we necessitate that lambda plus positive is greater than equals to zero we only accept the positive solution so this this is the form formula for lambda provided provided that because lambda positive must be real so we must ensure that this condition holds true so this puts a condition on e um yeah for for this to be for for lambda plus to be real okay so yeah so so our our lambda plus is found our characteristic length is found so what do we have next so let's find a uh, expression for um, psi one plus and psi two plus in terms of each other. So going from coming from this equation, if we go from this equation, um, we can show that psi one plus times m two v squared minus e equals to oh, sorry plus i v h star yes if we just take one of them we know the other one will be true because we have a specific condition on lambda so
Yes, so this is now our uh, relation between psi 1 plus and psi 2 plus. So that means that so for x greater than 0 for one half of the equation we have for any eigen energy So basically this is our solution for the right the right side of the mass distribution for x greater than equals to zero. Okay. So yeah, so we just substituted this guy into here. Okay, and then this so what what do we observe from here? We do a plot of it, a small plot. You see that this guy is a two component vector, but we take consider the spatial distribution. This guy is a constant, this guy is a constant, you consider a spatial distribution. What does the spatial distribution look like? It looks like that. And there's a characteristic length. So this length is approximately lambda plus. Sorry, 1 over lambda plus. Uh, yeah. Hmm? Uh, characteristic length is approximately yeah, basically, basically, this is the graph of e to the power minus lambda plus x. So the characteristic length is short. Then, um, then, then it will be very localized. No, no, if the characteristic, yeah, sorry, if the characteristic length is short then it be very very spread out but if the characteristic length is large then be very localized so yes indeed this distance is 1 over lambda plus okay so that is for the uh, x greater than equals to 0 case so now the case where x is less than 0 later we need to combine the two together but the case where x is less than 0 is actually very similar so what we get is that um, so similarly our ansatz will then be so that we, we now have lambda minus but on the other hand we have a plus sign over here which means that as x goes to minus infinity, psi goes to zero. So we require that lambda minus is positive and is real. Okay, so now uh, our mass distribution is now minus m1. So that's a small change. So we plug it in um, following the steps above. So there's at first there's a derivative here. So we have So then we replace the derivative with this um, lambda minus. We cancel the lambda minus away. Okay, so from here we have another relation, which is that it's a slightly different relation.
so this is our new relation so what this allows us to do is that our eigenstate will then look like um, will then look like psi x less than 0 is equals to this uh, yes and we still have yet to find a condition for a uh, formula for lambda minus um, but we take we do the determinant again we take the determinant equals to zero and we obtain um, e squared minus mem1 v squared This will give us and we take the positive only. Yes, so with that, um, okay, so we have now we have now have the con we have the solutions for x less than zero as well as x greater than zero. So we just need to piece them together. So um, yeah, so so how do we piece them together? We we consider the the they must meet at x equals to zero, right? So at x equals to zero they must agree. So so we now piece the two solutions together. One of them one of them looks like Oh yeah, I forgot to plot this one. This one briefly looks like um, it briefly looks like that. Okay, with the characteristic length one over lambda minus. So if we piece them together, we obtain um, So what does this give us? This gives us comparing the second component we get and comparing the first component we get now if we substitute in we cancel we cancel the cancel these terms and we substitute in the formulas for lambda plus and lambda minus we obtain yes so we square both sides and rearrange the terms. We essentially get so now um so this gives us a condition for the two so we have the solution for the negative as well as the solution for the positive x. We want to piece them together, right? So this gives us a condition for them to be meeting to have an agree on the same value of x equals to zero, which is important for it to be a physical state. And this condition essentially tells us that the only way for that to happen is E equals to zero. Because we know M1 and M2 are both positive and V squared is always positive. So E equals to zero is a condition. So in, in other words, the only allowed energy is E equals to zero. So yeah, so this is a zero energy state.
and it is localized around the origin or rather localized around x equals to 0 due to the e as well as the due to these two functions okay so now we have e equals to 0 um, we can substitute it back, back into all the other equations so e equals to 0 it lets us um, understand that um, first of all the characteristic lengths are now much simpler and so or written more condensed we have yeah so um, so one last thing to do is to find the value of psi 2 plus and that can be used done using the normalization condition. So we have the integral of this thing squared from minus infinity to infinity equals to oh, dx equals to one. So um, yeah, so if we do the integral, uh, so we have the minus that minus i absolute squared plus one squared just gives us two. And then we have psi 2 plus um, this thing is absolute squared. Mm, we know the phase doesn't matter, so um, yeah. Then we have the so this is for for the for the negative part. We have um, we have two m one v x over h bar dx and then for the positive side we have and this is equal to 1 so uh, so what do we have here we have 2 uh, Mm. Um. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So to do the integral here, we get. Uh, 1 over 2m1v and then we have this and then we have um, we need to evaluate Okay, the two cancels. Okay, not not so fast yet. Let's just evaluate it first. This one is actually just one, and then this one, this term. So this term is equal to one. This term is equal to minus one. So minus one cancels with this minus sign over here. So we get. Let's 
the tools cancel so we have and So um, the face doesn't matter, so we can assume this to be real. Why does the face not matter? Because the face factor is a uh, is just a rotation in in, in uh, around the unit circle in the complex plane, and it doesn't affect quantum mechanics. So there's a phase uh, invariance kind of thing. So we get this, and in the end, we get that. Um, yeah, so we get that psi of x, the solution is equal to minus i1 times uh, there's a factor of v over h bar this is psi2, we just substitute it in and so this is our solution for the mass distribution of mx equals to minus 1 m2 oops sorry yeah so so and to show that this agrees with the book let's take a look over here so there exists a zero energy solution and the corresponding wave function is this so great wonderful so now um we could end the video here but it's worth discussing the robustness of this solution so why is this energy why is this zero energy solution special it's because um essentially uh right now we have a very very flat distribution where we have something like that and then something like that as in this if if we if the, we use this to model something in the real world having it so flat will almost never happen however uh, what is interesting to consider is that what happens if we deform this mass distribution such that instead it doesn't is isn't so flat by something more like I don't know something like that and something like that and then we see that there's a change in sign of mx over here so mx changes sign and what would be the solution then well it turns out that the solution would be something that is also localized around here so it'd be something like that. And why is that so? So, in other words, uh, the the localized um, the localized zero energy solution is robust to variations in the mass distribution mx so we will we'll now illustrate this mathematically so what does that really mean so uh, let's and so we have the in zero energy solution so the equation h of x psi of x equals to zero simply becomes uh, or rather e of x the complete equation like that simply becomes zero then we write it out in its the poly vectors thing again so we have a let's look for a zero energy solution so we multiply sigma x on both sides so we obtain Sigma x squared is simply one. Is simply the identity. So sigma x squared is equals to the identity matrix, and sigma x sigma z is actually equals to. It's a one one. Okay, I'll just do it completely out for you here. It's equals to zero minus one one zero equals to minus i times sigma y. So this is equals to. Okay, so if we express this, we have 
sigma x psi of x is equals to so we see two things that happen here one is that there's a derivative which is a spatial spatial action and one is a matrix action which is the poly matrix so uh, they don't really talk to each other so we kind of need to um, separate it out so how do we do so we find we suppose that um, we, we first of all we we know that there are two there are two eigen um, first of all we know that there are two eigen vectors of sigma y the matrix is given by minus i i and so this means that um, sigma y of 1i is equal to 1i. So this is an uh, eigenvector. 1i is an eigenvector of eigenvalue 1. And on the other hand, 1 minus i is an eigenvector of value of eigenvalue minus 1. So let's say that our let's let's first suppose that um, our, our 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 state our, our wave function has the form of one i and um, let's just say psi x okay I should put a plus here yeah so let's just say we have one solution like that okay one solution like that and the other solution and we have also another it's an unsatz in a sense we have another solution one minus i sigma minus i so you see that they'll be slightly different in both cases. So it div let's do the work out the first case first. Okay. So the first case, using this equation, substituting this inside, we get sigma of x. Yeah, and then we cancel both, we cancel the 1 and i. So we have an uh, expression of uh, equation for psi plus of x. So this gives us psi plus of x equals to, you just do the, it's just a standard separation of variables. You get integral from minus infinity to x, m of x prime, v over h bar dx prime so okay let's 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 graph this intuitively later okay so um later we'll graph this uh, yeah we will first work out the solution for the right hand the, the other case first so this is also very similar just that yes then we have a different sign and that gives us Yes, so we have these two solutions. Okay, these two solutions. So let's graph them out. So let's get a feel for what this looks like. Okay, so let's say our m of x is equals to, let's say our m of x, right, has the distribution, something like that. Not very even, but yeah, but there's a transition point at this, at this point. It'll be important you'll see later. So it transitions at this point. Then, what is our integral of this thing? Our integral of this thing, wherever it starts from, it will be at first decreasing. Then after it hits this point, it will switch signs and start increasing again. So this is your integral of m of x. Yes, so then we take the minus sign. We, take the, we then take the minus sign you see that this graph flips over so it will look like 
something like that and if we take the exponential and we take the exponential of this thing then we obtain something that is very localized around around the transition point so um, perhaps I can draw it here so we get something very localized around transition point after after normalization of course and so that is our edge state whereas for this, the other scenario okay so so this is for the case where mx this is the case where mx goes from minus infinity sorry it goes from uh, this is the case where m of minus infinity is equals to is, is negative where and m of this one is positive and so in the other case what is the other solution used for um, the other solution is used for the case where it's the opposite signs so in this case now our m of x will look something like that and then our green function uh, sorry we actually really say green function because green function has another meaning so it looks something like that okay and then I'll and then flipping it uh, yeah and then flipping it flipping the green one eh? um, okay so flipping the green one I think something like that And um, and we get that this is. Wait, hold on. Oh, oh, oh! That's why we don't flip it. Yeah, correct, correct. That's why we don't flip it. So the pink one will be also following the green one. That's why we don't flip it. That's why the sign here is positive. So that we ensure that every time in every single possible mass distribution whether it's the left case or the right case you always have uh, the exponential the thing inside the exponential always has a maxima at the transition point and that is why it's, this case is also locally it's also localized around this point so we will see that whatever the mass distribution is as long as they change sign along the way from minus infinity to infinity so Maybe I should write it out as long as m minus infinity, m infinity is there are different signs. Um, there exists a localized state at the domain wall bracket. This is where m of x equals to 0, the transition point and this is exponentially localized and so we see that uh, m of x can be any shape any shape we want almost any shape yeah so um, so in a sense this zero energy state is robust to variations in m of x so yeah so that's the point that I've been talking trying to talk about just all so far and uh, you see what I mean uh, so so this book is quite great actually you should check it out you see that the sign uh, so yeah so if m of positive infinity and m of minus infinity differ by a sign as a domain wall there always exists a zero energy solution near the domain wall of the mass distribution. Hence, this solution is quite robust against the mass distribution. So, with that, uh, yeah, we have come to the end of the video. In this video, we basically discussed the the localized zero energy states around the domain wall of the of the modified Dirac equation with variable mass and. And this is known as the Jacquel Rebbe solution. Yeah, historically, actually, they solved it first for the case where m1 is equals to m2, 
but you can see that uh, as developments pass, you you are able to generalize it a bit. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Sorry for my runny nose, and yeah, have a nice day. Bye.